I've created these three circuits in Electronics Desktop to study the response for each of the analyses, namely SI Wave with HFSS regions, SI Wave Standalone, and the full HFSS simulation of the cutout. For each circuit, we'll need to connect end port models and define them with their corresponding touchstone files. I'll show you how to create one of these circuits. In the circuit design, open a schematic. From the Symbols tab on the Component Libraries window, press the Models button. Now press the End Port component. This command automatically opens a window to select the relevant touchtone file. I'll select a touchtone file corresponding to the SI Wave only solution. This operation defines the End Port model. Place the End Port model in the schematic, click once, and press Escape. Add resistors to the schematic as shown. Add resistors and ground to terminate the other ports. Wire up the elements and connect the circuit as shown. Drag and drop a differential TDR component onto the schematic. Connect the TDR to the endport model as shown. We connect the plus and minus terminals of the TDR to the positive and negative members of the differential pair. We'll be looking at the TDR response from the connector end here. I've defined these grounded resistors to be 1 mega ohm. These are just here for safety to ensure a DC path to ground for the circuit simulator. These floating resistors are 100 ohms. They're used to terminate the differential component of the signals. Use the same method to create circuits for the other variations, SI wave with HFSS regions and standalone HFSS. Double click the TDR component and define the rise time. We want to stress these interconnects with some pretty high speed signals, so we'll set it to 35 picoseconds. Do this for all three circuits. Define the transient analysis setup as shown here. Define the step size to be 0.01 nanoseconds and the stop time to be 3 nanoseconds. Run the analysis. After it completes, we'll create the time domain plots. Click Results, Standard Report, Rectangular Plots. Select the desired quantities. Notice that the device property quantities listed here use the instance names of the TDR components in the schematics. Press New Report. The SI Wave TDR simulation results are shown here. The red curve used SI Wave only, while the blue curve used HFSS regions. The results are pretty similar, but there's a big difference at the beginning of this time interval. We'll come back to that in a moment. First, I want to point out this nearly flat region that extends from 1 nanoseconds to 2.2 nanoseconds. This represents the differential pair traces. The traces are 9 centimeters long, so they have a round trip delay of about 1.2 nanoseconds. That's the length of the flat period here. We can see from the plot that the differential characteristic impedance of these traces is 81 ohms. The results are pretty similar between 1 to 2.2 nanoseconds, except for some differences at the beginning of this time interval. Spike at the beginning is presumably caused by the vias in the connector breakout region, and so the HFSS region is capturing a 3D effect here. The solution with HFSS regions is picking up an inductive spike at 1 nanoseconds that the SI wave only solution missed. This is caused by differences in the way the two solvers model the vias in the connector breakout region. HFSS is doing a full 3D solution while SI wave is using a simplified 2D model. To verify that HFSS is responsible for these differences, we now superimpose the results from the full HFSS simulation of the cutout region, shown in green here. You can see that there is excellent agreement between HFSS and the SI wave results with HFSS regions for this inductive spike. One other thing that stands out is that the full HFSS results have a slightly different differential characteristic impedance, 78 ohms instead of 81 ohms, from the SI wave results. We could get an improved match here if we ran more adaptive passes in HFSS to better refine the mesh around the traces. This concludes the video. You've seen how easy it is to use HFSS regions in SI Wave and how they can improve accuracy for critical nets. Thanks for watching.